You are now listening to Out of the Blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. Now, is it Jay Wanner? It's uh, Jay Wanner. Wanner. Okay. So, Jay, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, born and raised in Utah. And just kind of been going to school down in St. George. I'm an avid hunter, avid gamer, all that fun stuff. Now, you, you actually focus on a specific thing I'm actually pretty interested in. You focus on video games. So you actually do a, a podcast with someone I've had on, uh, Kyler Saunders. Do you, got, do you find it as fascinating? Like a lot of people like nowadays are becoming more, I guess, open to video games where it was seen as a childish type thing before? Um, you know, I haven't really thought about it. That's a really good. That's a great question. Um, they, very, they have come a very long way with gaming. And I'm surprised at the amount of money people are making in it. I think and I think it's I think it's pretty awesome. Like nowadays, like I mean, back in the day, my grandparents would have been like, or my parents would have been like, "You're playing real games back in my day. We went outside and we cut the grass." And I'm like, yeah. "Okay, well, we're not doing that now. We're actually <laughs> able to um, do virtual reality and live in these types of alternate universes and these types of experiences that give us a sense of relaxation in life, dude." Yeah, th- then like the money made in it is is wild. There was a 16-year-old that won a Fortnite competition and won $3 million at 16 years old playing a cartoon game. It really, like, even my grandparents, they talked about that. They were like, I don't know what to say anymore. I'm like, is there anything really to say? Like, we're now realizing that, like, it's going to be incorporated into the Olympics now, video gaming, because apparently your sense of uh, perception or these types of things that apparently gamers are pretty, like, uh, relevant in like Call of Duty, like there's so many things going on at once that you're paying attention to so many different things and your reflexes, whether it's in your fingers, is becoming faster. I was like, I don't understand. I mean, I understand where people say like video games are horrible. I get it. All right. I understand the fact that, yeah, you don't want to spend your whole life inside. You probably should go experience the world. But who's to say a life of playing games is not something you can be good at or be passionate about? Yeah, I I agree with you there. The games, they can make a bad reflection on people, but I don't think it happens as much as people think it does. Like a lot of people chalk up video games being the violent detriment to society. I was like, actually, if you look anywhere in the world, video games give people an escape, but society is naturally pretty violent people are naturally pretty violent i mean the fact is it only takes us seven days until we decide we're hungry enough to eat somebody yeah and we're humans or animals there's gonna be violence where there's not cause which are your favorite types of video games to focus on because a lot of what people are lacking the understanding of is how expansive video games are you know they give you many different things to slip into whether you want to be mm-hmm. all about the farming simulator which i can't fucking stand <laughs> if you're gonna farm you might as well do it for real but i know my buddy that paid 90 dollars for the ultimate edition of farming simulator and he's a just farming every day in his life i'm like why he goes i enjoy it <laughs> hey if you enjoy it do what you do i i focus more i love first person shooters so i i'm a big gamer in the in the games that people think that are causing violence. I think a lot of people chalk it up because that's the most immediate thing, but there's also, they have to chalk in the factors of, is this person really going to, since he's shooting and beating up a stripper in a game, is he going to go do that in his everyday life? No, I don't think he is. Um, I remember like I come from a little bit of a background where I kind of, got addicted to my video games because it was an escape from reality. You know, I didn't have a lot of things I could connect with, uh, whether my parents working jobs or something where they weren't home or not having anybody to kind of structure myself off of where I got addicted to my Xbox a little bit of a way. They say 
video games linked to depression, anxiety, and a sense of emotional stress a child has. And that's because they're structuring their life on it because just like anything, they've become addicted to it because it is an escape. It is a sense of dopamine. It's a sense, whatever you want to chalk it up to. But you have to understand that with video games, like I see people that are completely successful and happy in the life they have by the guy that wears a Minecraft t-shirt goes to Walmart, gets a 48 uh, can thing of Mountain Dew or a bunch of two liters and gets a bunch of bags of Doritos. And in my mind, I'm like, that guy's going to have a really good fucking night. Like I already see it gaming headset on in front of the TV up for three days straight with the stack of pizza boxes. I did that. I had my time in that. I realized it wasn't for me, but who's to say it's not for somebody else? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, those people that uh, that structure their life around video games, like when when parents let their kids, that's like that's all they let them do is play video games. I don't think that's how it should be, because then it does become a problem, and then they just are constantly thinking about that the entire entire time of their day is like i just need to go play my games i need to go play my games i think people should use it more as a stress reliever or as a counseling mechanism if that makes sense yeah well you 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 don't want to structure your life off video games a lot of people like they understand they have responsibilities as an adult you have to make you have to go to a job you have to do these things and then when you get home you get to have a sense of relaxation with video games you can't just be 40 years old playing dungeons and dragons in the basement of your parents house for the rest of your life like that's just that's not going to happen you're stuck in a comfortability zone you don't want to go experience the world anymore I see it more and more now, video games becoming very popular because people are too afraid to go outside nowadays and try and experience what this thing they call life, Um, mostly because a simulation is so much easier to slip away. I see video games as being a very giant stress reliever and amazing technology. The fact that, I mean, I'm at fault for doing it recently myself. I got got addicted to World of Warcraft again. I haven't played video games in years, and I just started playing again, realizing, like, oh shit, this is a lot of fun. Like it, it kills the time. But I also look down at the clock, see it's 4 p.m. And the next thing I know it's freaking 10 p.m. I'm like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Where'd it go? And another thing about video games is like, they're getting so good now to being very realistic with the virtual reality and stuff. They're helping train pilots. They're helping train surgeons. And it's just going to get better and better and make people better at what they do. Yeah, have you seen what the virtual reality they're doing in um, hospitals now where the fact that they can do um, like goggles and all this type of virtual reality simulation type things of surgeries where they do a different problem scenario every time. And instead of learning on the job, it's helping them experience if this thing happens, they have to act this certain way. It's bringing them quicker to problem solve faster if something goes wrong and being able to do an assertive, a surgery effectively without actually hafting the practice. You hear that, and then you look at Flight Simulator, like, oh, it's just a video game where you're flying. Actually, they use Flight Simulator to train pilots, too, because a lot of what goes into it, I think those are the real type of video games, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm pretty sure we've all experienced Minecraft, the fact that you can <laughs> you can cut down an oak block and then turn it into four planks. Like, okay, it's not that simple. And then mm-hmm. you look at games like Flight Simulator where you have to make sure the landing gear's down when you're when you're about to land. You know, you have to focus on so many different things that they incorporate into actual flight time being real. Like a lot of people find a fascination with that because it is a sense of you're still getting training out of it. You're still getting real hands-on world experience. And don't get me wrong. I mean, you can't go wrong with uh, punching a cop in the face and running over a couple hookers in Grand Theft Auto. I mean, yeah, that's fun too. (laughs) You got to look at like, we are pretty chalked up to following a structured life. Like everyone feels like something's telling them they have to live this way. They have to do that where people go into a video games and they create the whole environment. They feel like they can't create for themselves. Yep. And, and it's going to keep getting better and better as time goes on. It's going to help a lot of people be very good at what they do. And people, I think people will look different on it eventually. I mean, it's what, great. What problems do you see that people are facing with um, video games? Like what would you say are the biggest common factors? 
I think the problem is that there is violence and they don't want their kids to see that, which then they cannot buy that game for that said kid, but they're not helping their cause at all by buying these games for them. And I think that's the biggest issue people are looking at is it's, it's just violent. It's just violence. That's the only thing anybody's ever worried about is violence in video games. I think a lot of people, yeah, they focus on that narrative aspect, thinking that since a kid's shooting in a game, he's going to be the person to shoot up a store. Let me mm-hmm. tell you something. If someone has the balls to go shoot up a grocery store and a video game set that off, they were going to do that anyway. Yeah. You, that, does, that does not spark inspiration. You know, the fact that I don't randomly start driving and decide I'm going to head on to the sidewalk for a little bit and start running over people the fact is it's a video game and it's not actually hurting anybody you're only bringing a sense of relief it's not creating a stressful personality but when people chalk up to video games being violent okay well video games aren't the only thing that's violent if you start outlawing video games you're gonna have to start outlawing movies you're gonna have to start outlawing songs that are violent you know you're gonna become too sensitive and focus on the wrong aspects of society if someone has a problem and decides to freak out and shoot up a grocery store that person was more likely going to do that anyway without video games influence yeah and i watch i watch a lot of true like true crime and uh those people that are doing those things, they have, they have bad experiences when they're little or with their parents that kind of forces them into that state of mind. Not once have I ever heard of somebody doing that because of a video game. It's yeah. always because of the traumatic experiences they've had in their life. Well, I wrote a paper in school about um, video games and it being linked to uh, like violence and people. I'm like, it only sparks aggression when they become too encaptured into it. And that's not aggression towards other people. That's aggression towards themselves. They get frustrated. I mean, hell, I've experienced a time trying to play expert on Guitar Hero and like, I can't fuck. And I, you know, you go to think about, you're about to throw your Xbox out the window to the point where your little brother's like, hey, don't do that. That's our Xbox. And I'm like, oh, like you have to kind of come to realization like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I think the fact is people get really overwhelmed and especially when someone's talking shit on your mom or something over Xbox Live or whatever type of online platform you're playing. People are constantly just trying to put someone else down. And I think it's also a great aspect in a learning environment for kids when it comes to it's opening you up to people and how ridiculous people can act. You got to understand there are ridiculous people in the world, but they got that way somehow. And you got to learn how to structure yourself, not to be like them. You know, look at, I'm getting upset over a video game and there's something wrong here. There's something I need to fix in my own personal life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's okay to get mad at a video game but not go over the top about it. Like it's going to frustrate you. Some games are very hard. Yeah. The fact I played Spyro and um, I got the new reignited trilogy or whatever. Mm -hmm. First, one of the levels I was a little kid, I'd get so pissed off. Nap time was the answer. Like you have to (laughs) get too overwhelmed. I get upset. Dude, I beat, I never beat this one level. I beat this level. Now five minutes. It took me, I walked downstairs. I was like, can I ask you something, mom? She goes, what? I said, was I retarded as a kid? <laughs> she goes, what do you mean? I'm like, I just beat this level. And I explained to her what happened. And she goes, no, you're an adult now. You're becoming a lot better and more adaptive. And you got more experience on your on yourself now. I'm like, oh, thank you for clearing that up. I was really kind of self-suffering from something there. And I went upstairs, beat the next level in 10 minutes. I was like, don't lie to me. I was retarded. Like, <laughs> it, like the fact that something's so hard, sometimes you need to set it down and take a break. And then come yeah. back to it. And then you end up beating it. Like, why was I stuck on that? It's because mm-hmm. you're looking at it. For, you had time to realize and rationalize and also take a break. I think a lot of people need to step away with life sometimes. You need to kind of take that relaxation mode. Enjoy a video game. You know what I mean? Treat yourself to a, a pre-order or something, whatever you want to do. And that comes with anything. Whether you want to just find relaxation in nature. 
take a time to relax because life is overwhelming. And the fact that you can't point the blame towards something as much as people want to do. The fact that, oh, that kid played a lot of Call of Duty, owned a lot of Call of Duty video games. That's why he had an arsenal in his house. No, he probably was suffering something and he was going to have an arsenal anyway. Yeah, I agree with I agree with that opinion 100%. People... People will eventually look at video games differently, but I don't think it'll be in the near future. I think the Olympics will help. You think that incorporating that's going to show people like, oh, this isn't just some stupid little hobby pastime. It's something that like it has a it takes skill to play. I mean, a lot of people get paid for it. Do you think people have a more of a fascination with the fact of building like? Do you see video games like trying to build them as a waste of time or do you see the complicated process that goes with being involved into it? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. So basically like you look at a a game like Minecraft. Do you see that as something like the deep down layers of it, like all the genetic coding that had to go into, or not genetic coding, but all the programming that had to go into it, all the types of factors in there. Because I try to change my perspective on just playing, you know, a dumbed down version of what I think a game is by like just building a couple blocks and building a house. Like I did it, but I see things my cousin creates, like these Mm -hmm. giant structures with like angles and everything's kind of like, especially with Fortnite, like I've never played it, but like he has to do so much stuff where I'm watching and I'm like, oh my God, like this is like real like stuff. Like this is something that you can do and incorporate in life a little bit. And then I see like people that want to be programmers and people that go, oh, you just have a fast, you just like playing video games. You just like playing a ridiculous hobby. I'm like, it actually takes a lot to even build one of those games. It takes so many years of developing and so many processes in the background that we're just completely ignorant to. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, my girlfriend's actually uh, com- is going into computer science, and I've seen her homework, and it's insane. That does take a lot of time, and that is that is some crazy smart people out there building these. What like what kind of games do you like? You said you play Call of Duty. Do you, like I found my fascination being with Assassin's Creed, only because yeah. it typed it incorporates history, something that I found was really really hard to read especially when you're reading like one-sided text, like obviously history is written by the winner. So Mm -hmm. you look at that and then you find out the real information, whether it's about Christopher Columbus, about how bad he really was and all these things like, oh, he's just a person. He's not a glorified hero. Like we want the book to show us that he is. Mm -hmm. And Assassin's Creed dived me into the realm of Leonardo da Vinci, being able to work with him. I was like, this is not just a fake kind of history lesson this is incorporating a little small bit of history and getting maybe opening up the door for someone to go do their own research and have a fascination with something you know they're using video games nowadays in schools as job simulators to see if what a kid's truly interested in i hear that and i truly change my perspective on how ridiculous video games are yeah it's cool to you know play a game where you're just sitting there like castle crashers you're just nothing but beating up and watching a deer go through massive diarrhea like that's Mm -hmm. funny but you need that sense of relaxation but you can also take it in a whole different aspect a kid playing minecraft like my little cousin he might be an architect he's having a fascination with building we started with blocks now we just moved to a whole nother system it's adapting to a change where technology is becoming so expansive yeah, I think video games are there to help you expand and explore. If you don't, if you don't get super addicted to video games, that's all you do. If you use them as kind of a source to expand and explore the world around you, I like, I like that. Do you find that like? is this something you want to be doing is kind of in in life? Like what's your end goal? Like, what do you want to do career wise? Do you want to dive into the realm of gaming? Do you want to do something that involves maybe building a structure for games? I don't see myself as making a career in gaming as keeping it more of a hobby. I, I don't like, I don't want to learn to hate it because so I don't want to do it for work. 
I want to keep it as a hobby. So I always enjoy doing it. So what do you do want to do? I am going to school at the moment for HVAC. And that's kind of what I plan on to set my career as because it's a steady thing to do and great benefits come along with it. I took HVAC. Um, tell you, it was the, it was, it was, I should have took more time understanding it than I did back in the day where I was just taking it to not take Spanish. And then I ended up working at a hotel that I am doing now and I'm on all Hispanic staff and I know no Spanish. So I'm just getting cursed at in different languages where I'm like, I probably should have taken Spanish, but my buddy took HVAC and he makes $20 an hour and he owns six cars. Now he's been doing it for a couple of years and Yep. So he works overtime and like he set his life up for success. And I'm seeing that now and I'm like, well, I see my life. I got problems. That's those are my problems because I didn't set myself up to not have those problems. I'm dealing with the things that I had to come to. And I think what you said about HVAC being a steady job, but what do you want to do deep down? Do you truly know yet? I don't truly know deep down. I would. I don't know. Well, I think I've always I've always struggled with that. Like throughout, like my high school days, when everybody's like, "What do you want to do?" I I gen I don't know. I don't that's, know. That's the main reason why people go to college. The reason why I went. You know, the yeah. fact is, like, oh, I'm still in school. That was just a safeguard till I found out what I wanted to do. You mm -hmm. know hopefully that hits you a little bit sooner about what you want to do, but like you're obviously passionate about video games. Is there anything else you're really truly passionate about? Oh man, we're getting deep here. I like this. Oh, um, I'm passionate so about like this wildlife. Is... I like this. Yeah. I like this <laughs> I'm passionate about wildlife and you know, there's a bunch of jobs I can go into that has to do with conservation and all that, you know, are you more about building it? Are you kind of an environmental guy? I like, yeah, I, I am. Well, I have a fascination with nature too, man. Cause I mean, I spent much of my childhood years camping, you know, having mm -hmm. a sense of relaxation. I saw it as a problem when I started bringing Xbox to the campsite or <laughs> different types of things. But let me tell you, dude, sitting at a bonfire at two o'clock in the morning, uh, either with your dad or whoever you're connected to family wise i remember sitting at a bonfire at two o'clock in the morning with my dad eating crabs and shrimp i'm 12 years old like what like this is how my weekend is this is awesome he's like right he goes we're eating crabs at two o'clock in the morning by a bonfire where else can you do that unless you're on a campsite and he incorporated something that i was very passionate about i had a whole aspect change for nature i think you know, people choose to experience whether you want to slip into a video game to go into some beach type area that you're not able to. That gives people that option. You know, you can slip into virtual reality and experience a simulating type games, whether you want to experience cheat codes into Grand Theft Auto, have a bunch of money or Sims. You know, we want to connect with one another, but we're not willing to take the true effort in our everyday lives to. And I think when you look at nature, there's so many fascinating things and teaching methods that it can also teach you you know it's so nice being able to sit by a stream or sit by just a little bit of water and just truly take a deep breath and hear the wind in the trees like that's a sense of calming effect for a lot of people it really is um i'm an avid hunter and there's really no better feeling than just sitting there and just listening to everything around you like, there's no noise pollution it's just pure nature yeah, yeah, like I've had so many friends and people I've talked to about hunting and I, it's not something I'm interested in only because like I just, I just don't I don't want to take all that effort to pack all the stuff out there but he goes like my buddy goes, you know, it's it's all about like I know sometimes I go out there I'm not going to shoot anything, but I'm so willing to wake up early in the morning and put in all the effort to do that because that sense of feeling I get when I'm sitting in a deer stand and just truly nothing around me, no problems, it's all in front of me. Everything is this is the moment I'm living in. This is the calming effect I have. I'm in I'm living in the now. I'm not living in an escape. And I hear that and I'm like I get it. I get why you do all that. You know, I get why you 
wake up that early, set the feed out, you know, do all these types of things to be able to do what you enjoy. And then that deer or whatever that they're trying to hunt, is just a bonus, you know, yeah. that is the main goal, but the main goal in life for them was already completed when they had that sense of relaxation, that slip away. Yeah. What types of things have you hunted? I have mainly done deer and I'm going to be doing elk and a bear soon within the next year. Bear. Yep. A bear. Aren't you scared about how bad a bear could easily fuck you up? Oh, I am definitely, I'm scared to death of that, but it would be a really cool hunt. Have you ever seen a page called Nature is Metal on Instagram? I have not. You need to follow this page, sir. You're going to see some weird shit. I saw the Revenant, and I thought that bear attack was pretty real. Dude, I watched two bears fight each other. I would lose in an instant. I don't even – I got humbled by watching this video. These two bears are just, like, slowly approaching each other, and then they one gets behind a tree. The other one gets behind the other side of the tree. They stand up on their hind legs, and they swat around the tree to hit each other. Then they're rolling, and, I mean, they're biting each other by the jaw, slamming each other. And I was like, if I was fighting that bear, I'd be fucking dead. Like I, yep. I, I wouldn't even fight. I would just let it kill me at that point. Like do it, like put my head in there first, like towards his mouth. Cause I'm <laughs> seeing this and they're just ravaging each other. I'm like, these are giant ass animals that people think are fluffy. And you know, you have a stuffed teddy bear as them. And you think it's the same thing. Make them nice in movies, but those creatures are one of the most dangerous on this planet. You think people need to be more aware that animals are a lot more dangerous than we think. Hmm. I think in some places they do. I, I feel like some people get it. Like in these areas where there's a lot of crocodiles and alligators, you don't hear about people getting bit by them because they know that'll fuck me up. Yeah. But in places where they're not used to seeing those animals, then yeah, I think they need to be way more aware of what animals can really do. I've, even, I've, I've, well, I've talked to people from Australia and I'm like, why do you live in Australia if everything out there can kill you? Me and this guy had like a 30-minute intro conversation about kangaroos and how they can fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Now, I come from watching Kangaroo Jack. So I think of mm -hmm. them as the, you know, I said a hip, a hop, a hip, like that whole thing, that whole song mm -hmm. pops in my head when I think of kangaroos as these little like just hoppers. Dude, they're savages. They are. They, they, will, f they will box the they, shit out of yeah. you. They stand on their tail and they'll fucking donkey kick your ass in tomorrow. Like they, they will fuck you up. Well, like I was telling you, this this page, Nature is Metal. You should follow it on Instagram because I guarantee you, you're gonna love so much of the shit. It shows the grueling aspects of nature, but also the beauty of it. Like I saw, you see, like a wolf or something getting beat up by a yak and it brings like a sense of hu like humanity into you. You're like, Oh my God, like this thing fights for its life, but people don't understand. They see nature as a ferocious beast. People are a ferocious beast. Nature is pure. You know what I mean? Yep. The, the fact that when a, a, a lion is full, they can walk into a group of gazelle or group of antelopes or group of whatever and the, none of them will run away because they understand that lion just ate. He's not eating again. He's not. He's satisfied. He's full. A lot of people aren't full in the world today. I think humankind is probably the biggest thing you should be worried about in the world. Not even a bear. You should be more worried about human nature. Yeah, I agree. Um, this uh, conversation about wildlife reminded me of something I seen. It was uh, the gorillas, like. The orangutans and stuff, they, they've hit their stone age in their evolution. They've been using like tools and like makeshift spears to fish. Do you believe we came from apes? Because I have, a, I think we do, um, mostly because I've seen in the zoo a little bit, I've seen development and I'm like, there's, they, they learn to hunt in packs to get a bigger animal to feed the group. Like there's a lot of human characteristics in apes, even though we're more closely related to pigs. Yeah, I, you know, I really haven't had an idea on that because I've, I've had the hardest time wondering if we came from apes. Like I have a big fascination of wanting to know that, but I don't think I picked a side really yet because I just want more information. I like seeing development 
and things. And um, let me tell you something. I, the first time I went to a zoo, I saw a monkey. It started masturbating 10 minutes after it picked up a stuffed animal. So I know it has some human nature in it. Okay? Oh, definitely. most definitely it does. And I, I, I see this and I see a gorilla and then I look at a chimp or a monkey. We do, They do similar or we do similar things to them. Did you hear about the monkey that beat up the zookeeper and killed him? Um, I'm not sure if I've heard of that. So there's a story about a, ch- a bunch of chimpanzees. There was like a zookeeper that had a favorite monkey out of like the whole enclosure. One that was kind of pushed away from the other seen as like an outcast. Well, it was uh-huh. his birthday. So they gave him a cake. Now all the monkeys saw that this one monkey was getting a cake. So what they did was they beat up that monkey, killed it. And then they broke out of their enclosure and then killed the guy. And how they did it was they ripped, them to shreds they took everything they ripped his dick off they did a bunch of stuff and you hear that you're like holy shit that's savage and you're like but it they had the 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 nature aspect of it was they would literally utilize any tool like when chimps fight they're a lot different from gorillas they don't just fly into each other and beat the shit out of each other Mm -hmm. chimps go for the thing they think you hold the most dearest to you and rip it off and for guys it's their dick Okay, they take any advantage you might have and rip it off or try and just bite it, whatever, whether it's biting the dude's fingers off or something. It's all about weakening your foe. And you can see that common correlation with people nowadays. The factor is we try and weaken people around us today. You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, I'm more happy being in my deer stand than having a million dollars and being surrounded by nice things because I have a sense of connection with the earth that I'm on. You know what I mean? A lot of people lose that true aspect of things. They tend to like forget like how nice it is to go experience the beautiful sounds of the ocean, experience the beautiful wind through the trees, or just experience the bright, colorful things out in the world today. Everyone thinks it's, you know, the world's scary. The world is scary, but there's beautiful things about it. I mean, I found most of my fascination with human nature when it came to going to campgrounds and experiencing that, riding my bike and like hearing the tires on the road. And at the same time, there was a a nature park and a nature conservation place I went to where they had hawks in an enclosure and they were keeping it sustained. And then now I go around the world today and I see so many buildings that are just there taking up space and Mm -hmm. wasting the land. What do you think about that? You know, I experienced something that I experienced that just a few days ago when I was driving from Salt Lake down into southern Utah. When you see that Wasatch Front, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but like once you get into that that downtown Salt Lake area, you can just see the houses, like how much they've migrated up that Wasatch Front. And it's mm. just it just blows my mind that they're they're ruining all that mountain space. They're like halfway up it already, and it's that's a big mountain. And we're just constantly putting our you know, fingers everywhere that we shouldn't be putting them. We shouldn't have to have nature parks. We shouldn't have to have conservation places. We should be more willing to keep a lot of the land pure, like keep it, you know, try its best. I can tell you right now, my buddy lives in a place that's a little bit out in the country, but that country's changed so much. Every time I go to his house after like every other month or something, it's completely changed. They built up a whole community of houses that look exactly like the community beside it. And that's all becoming the same thing. There's no different things about these houses. If Mm -hmm. we got down there one time, we skateboarded down there. We got lost. Yeah. You don't, you don't know where you're at because there's no, everything looked the fucking same. Yeah. There's no, what what was that word? Uh, You just just don't look any, everything looks the same. It's all bland. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Where's the where's the things that made things different? Like I like seeing a nice, like developed house, a structured house. But at the same time, when everything starts looking the same, and this community has been open for about half a year now, and let me tell you, there's nobody still living in it. It's yeah. a waste of space. There was this. It's literally just one long ass road, and there was one house on there. One house. The dude had all this forest behind him, and it's all gone. It's all community homes now, built by a giant development company. And I see that. I'm like, that one dude that lived right on the highway probably hated his life, but realized his whole backyard was nature. And now he's looking at nothing but oak fence built up around a giant community 
bunch of homes. Like his whole view is gone now. Like that guy must be so pissed off. Yeah, people are just like we already have enough homes built. We don't need to. We don't need to keep expanding. But like, we, there's enough places for everybody. Like we constantly want to build more, even though yeah, we have so much. It's a waste of space, like you said. I love it how people always chalk up to the example. I want to go visit Yellowstone. I'm like, it's not like it used to be. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's nothing even close. And the fact that we have to say, I wish I can go experience nature by going to Yellowstone. It's like you can't even experience nature outside your front porch anymore. Yeah. I uh, I went to – I don't know if you've ever had the chance to, but I've gone to Hawaii. There's a place um, called Hanama Bay. It's a national fish reserve. Okay. Let me tell you something. I went there back 2012, and then I went back in 2016, completely different in four years. It's wild. I mean, before I went there, it was literally a national fish reserve. The first time I went there, there was so much fish and so much beautiful coral. I went four years later. Half the coral was dead. There were barely any fish there. They were all – you had to swim super far out where people – we're not going because the main thing people don't understand there is the land and taking care of it. And it's not the Islanders, it's the tourists. They're completely ignorant to what's going on. They tell you, please do not stand on the coral because it kills the coral. People stand on it and take pictures on it. Stand on it. Yeah. And I saw this coral that was just bleach white. I was like, what happened? They're like, people killed it. And now the fish have to go farther, farther back. And sooner or later, this fish reserve is not going to be here anymore. I'm like, this is what is designated to be an area. And they, they give you a video in the beginning telling you, please take care of the, this, this so we have it for future generations. And people are like, fuck that. That's not my problem. Yep. They're, people are too touchy. They just want to touch everything. Like they I, can't, reach, I have, they can't reach it alone. I have friends that are environmentalists and a lot of them are because they hunt, they experience the land they live on. Like I tell my buddy, like you ever, you just ever kill a deer and leave it there. And he goes, no, why would I do that? Like I'm going to go out of my way to kill a deer and then leave it there. I'm going to only kill it if I need it. Or if I, if I, if I, if, if I'm going to benefit from it somehow, you know what I mean? I'm not just going to shoot it because I can. I'm like, you understand that whole rational thinking is something people don't do anymore. Yeah, that's exactly like I I won't hunt duck anymore because I don't like the taste of their meat. And there's no reason for me to shoot at them. I have no benefit at all from them because I don't like the way they taste. Everybody wants to have food and be able to survive, but nobody wants to understand where it comes from. Yeah. Like. You know how humbling it is to eat something that you killed yourself and brought and then took all that time and effort to consume? It's a good feeling. You know it didn't suffer. You know it it wasn't. Do you think people need to rationalize and try and do that at least once in their life, kill something and then eat it? Like being able to take away a life and then being able to consume it and see like how different it is from just buying your food off the store? Yeah, I don't think that you need to first-handedly experience that, but I do think they need to be further educated about that. So, do so you think lived. what what would you say you estimate for nature in the next ten years? I think that I mean, like, it's a big thing right now. It's it's kind of gone viral with the nature thing, right? I think humans, we, I think we will save nature. I don't think it'll get, I think we will better it than worsen it. I think we are getting better at cleaning the oceans. And I think we're getting better at deforestation. And with plastic and recycling, I think everybody understands now, like, okay, we've been fucking up for a long time. Now it's time to do something about this. Yeah, I mean, you can anybody. I think if you just looked up the things we don't want to see because it might be too graphic, like nature is metal. That page shows the the crazy aspect of nature, the the nature side of nature. I would say, but they make you click a thing that says it's a it's mature content. I'm like, why is it mature? It's pure. Yeah, it's nature. 
you have to be a certain age to be able to see it. Like it happens. It's not like we're totally glossing over the fact, but the fact I can watch a sea turtle getting a straw pulled out of his nose on Facebook. Like mm-hmm. shit. Like I live in a water town. I live in a town that's right on the beach. A lot of our main stuff comes from, you know, the ocean, fish, all these different types of things. It's constantly seafood restaurants everywhere. And people are more than willing to take a can, crumble it up, and throw it off their boat right into the water. I'm like, how are you going to try and survive off being a fisherman if you don't even care for the the water you're fishing in? Yep. That's insane. Do you really see that out there? Dude, I see it all the time. And the fact is, it's very, very hard. Like, we have a lot of tourists. I live in a tourist town of Maryland. So it's like people are so – throw. I dude – I've I've worked doing jet skis. I've worked in the water. I have a respect for the water. I know how bad it can hurt you. I also know people don't take care of it. You know what I mean? People yeah. choose to litter. You choose to throw your trash out the window when you're driving because it's easier than going to a trash can. People are becoming very lazy. I've stepped on a wide variety of things in the ocean. So much to the fact where I get... I, I, I'm, I'm just completely like I just I ignore when I step on something in the ocean anymore. I've stepped on a saw. I mean a saw, like an actual like wood cutting saw. I've mm-hmm. stepped on a sprinkler. I've stepped on things. I'm like, this is in the fucking water. Yeah, that's, that's those things. Those objects that you just listed off have like you shouldn't even be anywhere near them water. <laughs> and like people, it's so crazy. let's say chalk up to the main thing: plastic rings. Okay. There are so many companies now that are making dis- di- what is it dissolvable plastic rings so they don't get stuck around a sea turtle's neck. Uh-huh. I'm like these things. These people that are considered environmentalists, they're not environmentalists. They're innovators. They realize we're all living on this giant chunk of rock floating through space, and nobody's taking the time to at least pursue an effort in changing it. But there are people out there. But it's not the norm. It's not, you know, it's not affecting people don't see it affecting their lives. I'm like, you're also not thinking of what might happen in 10 years. You know, Mm -hmm. you're also not chalking up to the aspect of how wonderful nature is and that you should want to preserve it for your family members, you know, but they see it as, oh, that's the next generation's problem. If we all have that mindset of thinking the world's going to be pretty fucked. Yep. I took an environmental science class in high school and it wasn't a required class. It was an optional class. I think that class should be required because it teaches you like about all that environmental stuff, like that we're rooting it and we need to save it. And I think people are unaware of what, like what effect they have on this planet. What do you think about the people that think global warming is a myth? I don't even want to think about those people. I think they're uneducated. (laughs) I, I think they're, I think they just say it because they want to have their opinion talked about. I think they're completely oblivious to the true problems going on in the world. Yeah. I think you look at this July that passed was one of the hottest Julys we've had ever in recorded Mm -hmm. history. I think, you know, they chalk it up. Oh, it's just an Indian summer. You know what I mean? It's just the environment changes. It's constantly different every year. You know, actually environmental rates are actually the, the earth is doing better than it was years ago. Technology wise. Yes. We're a lot more advanced than lighting a fucking candle and using it to send our messages around the world or whatever. If you look at where the world is coming, I'm telling you, uh, there's a lot of weird shit going on that is unexplained. Um, I think the people that are seen as outrageous when they become environmentalists, I chalk up to you. You ever heard the church of euthanasia? I have not. It's a parody religion slash cult. Um, it's a group of people that believe that you should kill yourself um, to save the earth. They literally have a, a sign that says kill yourself for the earth. And if you read into it, you're like, what the hell are these people into? And you start reading it and you're like, oh, there's a deep meaning behind it that actually has a little bit of validity. When it comes to the factor is they believe that the only way the earth can truly be saved is if humankind, all population was gone off this earth and it would stop the change. Yes, you got to take into the factor of let's say cows, they produce more CO2 emissions than anything that's so, so much a detriment to our ozone layer compared to humans, you know? Mm-hmm. But the same factor is, 
they're not they're only doing that to be outlandish to get a message out there to make people look into what these people are interested in to highlight the true aspects that they don't actually want you to kill yourself if you go onto their website they tell you like we don't actually want you to do that we just say it's a suggested option but we want you to look at the world is going into a downward spiral as much as you want to believe it or not as much as you want to think the world's so awesome today we're looking at the technology we have and how easy our lives are but not how easy the earth is handling it i think i i made up the saying that you know the you know tattoos you can take it up to the same thing with earth that the earth only has a little bit of natural beauty left on it you can keep tattooing your own body but eventually you're going to run out of skin you're going to mm-hmm. run out of places to fill i think our, us as society and us as people we're tattooing the earth we're, we're taking so much where there's not going to be a lot left for other future generations to see. Hopefully one day we realize this and everyone comes to the rationale thinking. But I also have to realize muscle cars are pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> People aren't going to stop buying muscle cars or buying diesel trucks. They're going to keep doing 20 times the amount of damage one person's trying to do by changing their whole life to reduce, reuse, recycle. But if everyone thought like, oh, me doing something is not going to change anything, then you're already throwing yourself in the hole. Because if everyone has that mindset, then the world's truly never going to change. You have to realize there are people out there that are going to do twice the amount of damage that you're trying to stop. You have to realize that. You have to try and say, that's okay. I know what I'm doing right to make my generation better. I mean, I've went from being in a city like New York where there's brake dust in the air, okay? And that affects the way you breathe. You feel like you're like you, it's hard to breathe out there. My grandmom has asthma, but when we went to Hawaii, she didn't need her inhaler. Mm-hmm. The air was cleaner and pure. I was like, why is it that these aren't things that are highlighted in the world anymore? Yep, yeah, that's crazy. If people just did one or two things a day that had something to do with cleaning the world or helping the environment, the world would be a lot better of a place. Like the fact that animals are becoming more extinct and like now we're doing have to do like things where we're have to like clone and do these types of things to be able to reproduce. That's awesome. But the same factor is why are we making things extinct? Why are we doing that? We should see that as a problem with ourselves to make our lives comfortable. What about, you know, I would love to see a fucking saber tooth tiger. You know, that'd be awesome, but it's gone. And we're now being able to kind of clone things, but it's not the same thing. It's not the real thing. It'll look like it, but it won't be the the real thing. Yeah. You ever, you ever heard of Playatorian park? No. In Russia, in Russia in uh, 2018, they had the, um, new, uh, they got to be able to genetically bring back, um, woolly mammoths by cloning them off DNA samples. So they're making a prehistoric park that is filled with nothing but giant woolly mammoths. That's awesome. Yeah. You hear that? That's amazing. And they're going to have an area that's structured around keeping this place a, a, a park of prehistoric animals. And the fact is, I still see it like fucking people are, it's like going to an amusement park. You see litter all over the road because people are eating candy wrappers, funnel cakes, and just throwing it, like missing the trash can. Like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, like our town does so much. My town does so much when it comes to the boardwalk. Our natural attraction is the, is this giant two and a half mile squares of boards where it's like amusement parks on like every single street and there's sand, there's a beach, but we have constant signs. Please, you know, don't smoke on the beach. Please take care of like, leave only your footprints is a saying they have. But I see everybody, they go and toss something into the trash can, miss it. And throw it. like, we have people that constantly scan the beaches, picking up trash, doing all these types of things. It's their job to do. It shouldn't mm-hmm. even be a job. It should just be human. It should be moral right to, to take yeah. care of the earth you live on. Something that gives us food, shelter, and sustainable energy, first of all. Yep, I agree with you 100%. It's, that that park sounds awesome, but yeah, I agree with you. It's just going to be one more place for people to leave their garbage about. Have you ever thought about being an environmentalist? I have not, but I definitely will look into it after this conversation. I'm glad I could spark that in you. Maybe. 
you out of that uh, comfortability factor with HVAC. I mean, hell, you're already dealing with heating and air. Like it's something the earth provides. There you go. Look, I just chalked up a realization. That's uh, yeah. I okay. think, you know, to truly be, I guess, understanding and caring for the world, you have to truly hunt or experience some type yeah. of thing out in nature. Just yeah, at I least like kind of a, a good bond with the nature around you. Do you think people really truly understand and want to save that? Do you think people lose connection with the earth that they're on? I think they do because they get caught up. They get so caught up in everyday life, which like it's fine to get caught up in everyday life because life goes on. But you should always take a time, like just take a couple, just take a stroll through the park and just look at the birds there. Yeah, and so then take a stroll to a different park the next day and look at the different birds there. And then just wonder why do those birds stay over on that park and why do these birds over here? You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I think wonder. society needs to wake up a little bit. Like I'm more than happy not having like what I have a freaking uh, Wawa on the East Coast and mm -hmm. it's like a gas station. We have like seven of them, like not even like a mile apart from each other. Like I'm like, what the fuck? Do we need another McDonald's, man? Is it that important? Like, I'd like my kid to be able to experience what a tree looks like. Yeah. But we're more happy being more productive as a society rather than caring about the world we live on. Yeah. I feel like human as the... I feel like we will take that shift and turn and realize. Like I think everybody's just starting to realize that we do need to save this place. I think it will happen. I don't think humans will be the cause of the world distinction. I think it's going to take something very, very like we're at the point of shit's going downhill right now. Uh, we need to make a change right now as a group. Like, you know, uh, it, I talk up to the Simpsons movie, like Lisa trying to convince everybody levels are at this. And then it becomes a point like, oh, shit, someone messed up. And then next thing you know, we're at the point of critical level, like everyone yeah. has to come to that realization like holy shit the world's ending right now we need to all step up and take charge it's going to take something like that for people to actually truly wake up and try and help out this place yeah i agree with you I, with those there could be a couple small events that happen that could take a few for people to realize but people will realize one day and i hope it's soon yeah I mean, I have hopes for people, but at the rate we're going now, I don't think, I don't think uh, unless a drastic change happens. I mean, do you have hopes for the future? I do. I think that, uh, I think it's, it's going to be within, I'm not sure how old you are, but within our inner generation, like, I think we are the people to start to strike that into the next generation that they need to protect this place. I, I just want to know where Bigfoot is. I mean, I'm 21 years <laughs> old. I want to find out in the next 10 years if Bigfoot's real or not. I mean, probably not, but also you have to look at cryptozoology. There's about 6.8 is it, is it million species left undiscovered in the water and then 2.2 yeah, right. million left undiscovered on land. Like we're discovering over like a thousand species every year. Like, it's hard to think that there's not some type of ape-like creature out there. And I think that's mm -hmm. what will, like, you hear about people that go and camping or try to experience Bigfoot or trying to hunt them down. It's like, no, they're really just trying to get connected with the land they live upon. I have a, a theory of who Bigfoot is. is so it, Is it Tom Cruise? <laughs> it's not Tom Cruise. So, in the Bible... It's going back to the biblical stuff. Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's kids, right? Yeah. Well, Cain killed Abel, and God punished Cain to earth forever. He was never allowed to leave. People back in the biblical days were big people, seven to eight feet. And that's about how big Bigfoot is. So I think Cain is Bigfoot. I don't know if Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's kids. You know, I'm pretty sure they were Adam and Eve's kids. I thought, I don't know. See, it's so weird. I think when it comes to religion, I think people are getting bits and pieces of the big picture. Like all of them are possible. 
but I think we're all getting very – that's why they all hit kind of similar. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Cain and Abel in the book – in the biblical book of Genesis is yeah. um, Adam and Eve's first two borns. But, you know, you hear about that. I'm like, it's it's so weird. I think we take rabbit holes down things. And I think we're all getting pictures and glimpses of the big picture. Do I think God is somebody that is, um, you know, maybe a Morgan Freeman? I don't know. Morgan Freeman mm-hmm. could be God. I won't truly know until the end of my days. I'm not truly religious, but I'm open to all aspects of interpretation. I just think it's all about understanding. And I think you have to really focus on to take the time to truly understand. You have to realize what it's like to truly be one-sided and correct that in yourself. I think a lot of people like choose to be one-sided when it comes to being only completely oblivious to the world's problems because it's not evolving them. I'm like, but it does involve you. You, you live on this rock, like it's floating through space. Like, you know how easy it could be for the whole earth. Like we're supposed to experience an earthquake and from either now or in the next 10,000 years, it's supposed to completely level this planet. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm like, the earth's going to crack one day. Are you trying to push its progress towards that sooner or later? Yep. We should always be pushing it for later. So, man, I mean, I appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast, dude. I, I definitely yeah. think you need to maybe look into environmentalist a little bit, but that's just my mm-hmm. suggestion. It seems like you have a type of realness connection with the earth a little bit more than a lot of people do. Yeah, dude, I'm definitely going to research that. I I like the looks of that. Well, I appreciate you coming out on the podcast, man. I want to give you a minute here at the end to kind of promote your podcast with uh, Kyler, um, Game of Thrones. Yep. Yeah, we do a podcast. It's all about gaming, a little bit of life mixed in, Game of Holics podcast on Spotify, iTunes, anything. We're on all major platforms now. And uh, I wanted to apologize. It took me so long to get on your show. I had a real busy week. No problem, man. I, hey, I appreciate you even taking the time to be on it, dude, because it was it was cool talking to you. I actually I have, I'm, I'm pretty happy that someone out there thinks about nature a little bit in a better aspect than just something that's just there. Yep. Hey, if, you, if you ever need a guest again, me, me and Kickler would love to come on your show at any time. Right on, dude. I actually plan on being on your guys' podcast. Uh, whenever you guys get a day and structured show for me to guess, get, hop on, just shoot me a text and I'll be there. For sure, for sure.